Let's speak to Gronya uh, Hallahan, though, education journalist, because uh, teachers are demanding that grammar exams are stripped back to curb student anxiety. They also want to get rid of times tables testing uh, because, of course, uh, the teaching unions say that that makes it too hard for the kids. But with the context that we were just talking about uh, in terms of Ofsted, uh, being told uh, that basically you can't use one word descriptions of schools anymore because that's nice, nasty and horrible uh, for the teachers. Um, where on earth are we going to go next? Gronia, very good morning to you. Hello, good morning. Nice to talk to you. I was thinking, um, actually, looking at the GCSE results this year, in which, you know, they weren't particularly great and an awful lot of people were underperforming, shall we say, in maths and English, that this might not exactly be the time to cut back on, you know, testing students and testing kids because maybe they need more tests. So what you might not have understood about the GCSE results this year is that they've been brought back in line with 2019. So when the pandemic happened, we didn't have exams. Kids couldn't take their tests. They had to be given teacher assessed grades. Those grades were naturally higher than what you would normally get in an exam because if a teacher predicts your grade, it's not the same as taking an exam. We had that for two years and then we had a slow step back down so the children in the immediate years, like next to them, weren't unfairly disadvantaged. This year, exams took place as normal and they were the same results as 2019. So we can see that we've got back to what life was like before the pandemic. So children this year haven't massively underperformed. They haven't done anything wrong. There's, you know, there's nothing really to worry about. We are back where we were before the right. pandemic. Well, I'm very well aware really of, of what happened because I had really pleasing because, of course, we've been really worried about these children not achieving what they could. And schools have worked really hard. Parents have worked really hard. Everyone's pulled together to make sure those children aren't disadvantaged. So actually, this year's exam results. Brilliant news. Yeah, but they, were, but they were down, weren't they? Nevertheless, the point is, is that not they, compared to, they not compared to before the pandemic. Right. So but, the reason why but, they were up yeah, but hang last on. year, hang on, was hang on. The adjustments they made. But the point is, sure. I mean, I'm very well aware of what happened during those two years because I had two kids who both did GCSEs at the same time. Um, but at the end of the day. Um, that was a ridiculous idea because it gave them a completely false sense of security because it, it gave them th the thought that they'd actually done well in the exams. The, the, the grades were basically marked up, weren't they? Fake falsely, um, which, which, which wasn't a great idea because it didn't really give the kids any kind of sense that they'd achieved anything. So to compare the results this year to those years would be silly, wouldn't it? Because we know that those grades were higher than normal because of the circumstances. Yes, in which no, I, no, I get that. But what I'm saying so is... So they're never... back to 2019, so they're not down, they're back to normal. Yeah, so well, they're, they're back to 2019, which wasn't great either. The point is, my point, the point that I'm making is that the English and maths results should be getting better, shouldn't they? If we've got such a great system, then we should be getting better results every single year rather than staying exactly where we are. 2019 team were great results like this if we always want to do better we should always striving for, for better for our children there's lots of things we could say about the exam system that i think would be fair criticisms we need to have different qualifications for gcc maths and english to make sure that all children leave school with at least something to show for for those five years of study there's things we could say about the way the exams are taken there's lots of things we could say about exams but i think we can agree that comparing 2024 grades to 2020 or 2021 when they weren't taking in the same way is an unfair criticism of this year's exam results. Well, the way you're speaking, though, you would think that there weren't any failing schools in this country, and there seem to be an awful lot of them, aren't they? Because for um, one of the, one of the reasons that think... one of the reasons that uh, Ofsted are going to change the way that they talk about schools is because teaching unions say um, that it's not fair that using well, single that... word descriptions of failing schools is somehow wrong. So this is a different topic. If we're going to talk about exam well, it's results... it's about schools, isn't it? That's what we're talking about. Right. So the exam results this year weren't a massive failure. Kids haven't done worse than ever before. That's not true. The Ofsted grading, there is a new change that's come in from today. So schools are no longer going to have an overall judgment. They've always had four judgments in four different subcategories, and they're rated exactly the same as you might imagine. Good, outstanding, requires improvement or inadequate. Those four gradings are going to remain. So they're taking off the overall grading and instead all the reports will have those four gradings in the four different subcategories like behaviour, leadership, um, student wellbeing. Like that, that, those four subgrades they've always had on the reports are going to stay. The really interesting thing is from January, from, from 2025, and we're waiting to hear the details on this, schools are going to have a new off their system they're going to have a, a what's called a school card for each school and instead of just having 
school, we're anticipating having more areas that the schools are going to be assessed on. And that's, you know, that's that's quite a as that's going to be quite a substantial change to how offset inspections happen. The other important thing well, that's you think that's a good improvement or not? Well, let's wait and see the details. I'd, I'd hate to say, oh, this is going to be a great thing when we don't know exactly what's going to be on that scorecard yet. There's things that I think, and I, you know, as a parent, as somebody who's worked in schools, somebody who works with teachers, I would like to see, but we'll wait and see. The really important thing is that they're going to have a system where when a school fails and isn't meeting the the high standards they expect it's going to be a team that are going to come in and work with that school to make sure that those high standards are then met and i think that's going to be the important shift like this isn't something that should happen to schools it should happen with schools all schools are capable of delivering a good education for their students how can we do that let's make sure that there's the things in place to help them help them do that and work out why why they're not getting the results they should, why the education's not happening as it should be, and maintaining those high standards. And I think that's the really important thing in today's announcement. Yes, and I mean, obviously, the other big story in education at the moment is what happens in January uh, if, as we are told is going to happen, um, VAT is applied to private schools uh, and some parents say, well, we'll have to take our kids out of those private schools and put them back into the state system. Um, that could be a problem, couldn't it? State schools have coped amazingly well with the influx of students that they've seen when we've had to take in um, migrant children, refugee children, and they've coped really well with it. I have no doubt that they're going to cope really well if they have an influx of children coming in from fee-paying schools. OK. Well, Gronya, you obviously think the system is working brilliantly in school. Uh, I'm afraid I disagree um, with you. I don't, I, don't think, I, I don't agree with I you don't at all. I don't think that's a fair, fair assessment of what, what I've just said. I think that the, there's plenty of things we can do to improve, but I think we're, it's possible that we could do, we can do it. Like I'm, I'm optimistic that we could change these things. I don't think it's set in stone. I think there's plenty of things that could come in that could improve teaching. We can see that things aren't great at the moment. We can see that in the number of uh, the teacher retention. We can see that in the, the lack of te people wanting to become teachers. But that doesn't mean it has to be like that forever. I think we can improve things. OK. Well, we finally get to a point where we can agree then. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, Gronia Hallahan there, education journalist.